Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series of operating system. In today's session, we are continuing with the topic introduction to operating system. Myself Kunal Panchal, your instructor. In this particular session, we are going to discuss multi-programming operating system. In previous session, we have started the evolution of operating system, in which we have started with you know batch operating system, then we have discussed schooling, and now we are going to discuss multi-programming operating system. So, what was the limitations of schooling that we need to understand first and then we will discuss how that problem can be overcome with the help of multi-programming operating system. So what was the problem when we are dealing with schooling? So, so schooling works on you know uh, single processor system In the case of multi-programming operating system as well, we are dealing with uniprocessor or a single processor machine. But what is the difference? So in the case of schooling, one, once a process is scheduled for execution, okay, and once a particular process given the CPU or gives a resource for its execution, once it completed task, then and then we can schedule the another process for execution means so what is the drawback of that type of your system suppose during the lifespan of a process if process not only require CPU resource but also requires you know IO devices in that case what will happen initially that process will be executed in the CPU after some time it requires you no know, IO devices for its uh, remaining execution. So once it uh, switched from CPU to IO device, okay, at that uh, moment of time the CPU would be idle. Because we cannot uh, send or we can say give another process to the CPU, okay, for its own execution in the case of schooling because in the case of schooling we can assign or we say allocate the resources to a process one by one only once the execution of one process is completed successfully then and then the next process will be given to that CPU for its execution so utilization of CPU resource is very poor when we are talking about schooling and that we are going to overcome with the help of multi-programming operating system. So let us discuss how we can resolve the issue with the help of uh, this type of an operating system. Okay. So in the case of multi-programming operating system, you need to keep this in general in your mind. Still we are dealing with single processor system or we can say uniprocessor machines okay in which it contains only one CPU and you need to uh, think about it if we have one processor in the machine you can execute only one process or we can say one task at a time not more than that Means by having unit processor machine, you cannot execute multiple processes simultaneously. It is not possible. Means actual parallelism cannot be achieved with the help of unit processor machine. Okay, so uh, the term is what multi-programming operating system. So that you know, you think about it, sir, 
more than one process can be executed concurrently in a single CPU? No. The answer is different. Your statement is incorrect. By having uniprocessor machine, at a time, only one process can be executed. Okay, so in this particular figure, we have one CPU. Okay, unit that is nothing but we have one unit processor machine which contains two types of your memory one is secondary memory and another one is main memory. Okay, so these arrangements we have already uh, you know, understood in the previous session, but what uh, the different things we have in this case. Look at this main memory, content of main memory. So the main memory is divided into a different size of your know, partition. So what it means actually? So this main memory block contains various small blocks and each block contains a different thing. So what things are there in the in, in individual block? As far as main memory is concerned. So, the for, as far as first block is concerned, so first block is reserved for operating sy system itself. User cannot access this area of main memory because this block or this memory area is reserved for operating system only. Okay? And the remaining portion, the remaining portion. Uh, user can use for these or her own purpose. Okay, so P1, P2, P3, up to Pn, these are the different different set of you know, processes we have. Okay, so ultimately uh, they are you new know, programs, but when it is loaded into main memory, once they are ready for execution, and once the moment it start executing in the CPU, that means we are we call it as you know process. Okay, so these are the different processes we have in main memory. Okay, and these processes or we say these programs are ready for execution. Means we have all of processes in main memory. Okay, like we want we do P3 to P2, Pn. Yes, and these processes or we say programs are ready for execution in the CPU. Okay? But as I told you, by having uniprocessor machine, single CPU, we can execute one process at a time. Yes, even though we have you know, more than one processes which are waiting for resources for execution, but still we can allocate only one process at a time for execution in the CPU. Okay? So, these things you have to keep in your mind. So, what is multi programming operating system? That is the uh, based on this figure, you can come to know that what is multi programming. Multi programming, in, multi -programming it doesn't mean that you know all the programs are concurrently or is parallelly executed by the single CPU. It is totally wrong. Multi programming means more than one programs we are loaded into main memory. Okay, so that concept, so that all the programs can be executed at any moment of time whenever CPU or whenever the resource is free. So that concept is nothing but you know multi-programming. Okay, if you are you know uh, using your mobile phone, if you are using your laptop and in which you are uh, opening you know more than two or three applications simultaneously, that is nothing but multi-programming. That is nothing but multi programming. But multi programming and multi processing, these two terms are different. Okay. When we talk about multi programming, it deals with single, mach single processor machine and at a time only one uh, program can be executed. But in the case of multi processing, in that case, we will achieve real time result. Means when we talk about multi processing, it means there are more than one CPU, one, one more than one processors are involved in that system. So that we can concurrently execute different processes at the same moment of time. 
So you need to keep this difference in your mind of multi programming and multi processing. Okay. So what is multi programming? By having single CPU, we are loading more than one programs in a main memory for execution. Okay. So that if any program or basic process require some I/O operation. Okay, or they are, you know, so for example, waiting for another process, or they are creating, you know, some child process. So in that case, the main objective of multi programming is what we need to minimize the CPU idle time as much as we can. That is the main objective of multi programming operating system. And uh, uh, because it was the main domain of schooling in which the idle time of CPU is very large and that time we need to minimize as much as we can. That is the main objective or goal of you know, multi programming operating system. So let us discuss the uh, various points of you know, multi programming operating system. So the main objective is that you already, already it, it should maximize you know, the CPU utilization. Because what will happen in this case let us uh, look back to this particular figure. Suppose P1 is scheduled, P1 process is scheduled uh, for execution in the CPU, and it is it started execution in the CPU, but uh, after some amount of time, it requires you know, IO devices. So CPU, with the help of CPU, uh, the process cannot perform you know, IO operation. So definitely process needs to be switched from CPU to IO device. Okay? So once it switched from uh, CPU to IO device, what will happen? At that uh, moment of time, okay, because during that moment of time, during that period, CPU would be idle and we don't want CPU to be idle in any case. Okay? So what we'll do, if we have Another process which is already loaded in main memory and it is ready for execution. What we can do is if any process is entered into a waiting state, okay, or in case it requires an IO operation during its execution, what we do? We will do a context switching to a P2 process and P2 process will assign a CPU for that time. Because P1 is uh, doing an IO operation. So during that time, what will happen in the case of CPU? So CPU will fetch another process from the main memory and start its execution without wasting its time. So this is the main concept of multi programming operating system. Same way, if P2 after like, some after Sometimes the PD requires an IO operation. Okay, so uh, again, in that case, context switching would be performed. If we have PD, another process which is ready for ready for execution in the main memory, the CPU will pick that process and start its execution. This process repeats until, until and unless there is no process available into the Ready to work as a main memory. So, in this way, you can minimize the CPU at a time. And that is the main objective of multi programming operating system. So, let us discuss the second point of uh, multi programming operating system. Multi programming means more than one process in main memory which are ready to execute. That I already told you. Yes or no? This is called multi programming. Means more than one processes are loaded into main memory and which are ready for execution. That is called multi programming. Okay. Next. In the case of multi programming operating system, what will happen? A process generally requires, because you know, during as I told you, during its entire lifespan, Process generally requires CPU time as well as IO time uh, for its execution. Ok, 
Okay, so it means what? Suppose if any uh, one process we have that needs to be executed. Uh, say for example, if we have a program, uh, and after execution of that program, we need to take a take a printout of the output of that program. So what will happen? This program will be executed first in CPU because it, it, uh, with the help of CPU, it will compute the uh, output. And once output is generated, then that process needs to be shifted from CPU to I/O, so that we get the printout of that output. Okay, so in this case, process generally requires CPU time and I/O time. So, if a running process performs I/O operation or some other event which do not require CPU, then Instead of sitting idle, CPU make a context switch and pick some other process, and this idea will continue. This is the main uh, concept of multi programming operating system that I already explained you. Okay, so CPU will uh, never idle except two conditions that we are going to discuss in uh, upcoming slide. So, and that is not in our hand. Okay, so in that case, we cannot do anything. Yes, so that basically would be there. Anyhow, okay. now CPU never idle. In this case, CPU never idle except two conditions. If there is no other process available in the ready queue, in that case, CPU would be idle. In that case, we cannot do anything because if there is no other process available in the ready queue, how CPU will fetch that process? Because that is empty. Yes. Okay. And second case is what? Uh, second case is what? Uh, when context switching will happen. Context switching will see in the upcoming sessions in process management. It is very important topic to understand. So context switching means what? Uh, a CPU during execution of uh, a particular process, CPU will context switch from one process to another process based on some condition. If some specific condition is hold true, in that case, context switching can be possible. So it will temporarily suspend its uh, ongoing process execution and it will start the new process from the ready queue. For its execution, so that is another context switching. So that we will see it, uh, later on. But these things you should keep in your mind. So, and when you are talking about context switching, means what? Execution of P1 is going on, and if certain condition is satisfied, so that we need to temporarily suspend the execution of P1, and we need to give the CPU to process P2 for its execution. Okay, so that is the but context switching and this context switching switch requires considerable amount of time. So during this uh, context switching time, the CPU would be idle. Okay. So now once you understand the understand the working of your know, multi-programming operating system, now we are going to discuss advantages. The first advantage I, I already explained to you high CPU utilization. Obviously, as compared to schooling, the utilization of CPU is very high in the case of multi-programming. Second, less waiting time and response time. Obviously, yes or no, because in this case what will happen if, if any process is waiting for your IO devices, in that case, CPU will not wait. CPU will instantaneously fetch the another process which requires CPU for its execution and it will start executing it. So definitely waiting time and response time will be improved in this case as compared to scoring. Next one, now nowadays obviously it is very useful because load is very high. In uh, current operating system, in current configuration, you know, uh, and in current requirement, uh, definitely the load, load is very high. And to uh, 
compared with uh, the requirement of current scenario, evidently we need to have uh, some set of your system vehicles so that we, we can compete with others. So nowadays it is very useful. Multi programming operating system is very useful because of high load. Okay. So, one more example I can give you of you know, uh, multi programming operating system. Like, say, for example, if you uh, go to uh, you know, a hotel and uh, once you start you know, eating and uh, the waiter serves the food to you, once uh, it gives you know, a food one time, now that waiter will not wait for you. Okay. For your no permission to get some other food, it will not wait. Once, it, it, once uh, the food is given to uh, you, in that case, uh, then within you know that period of time until you require no, another food, that person will go to the another table and serve the food to the another people. So it means what? In this case, the execution means what? Uh, the different you know, customers should be satisfied simultaneously. Not at the same time we can say, but simultaneously uh, the, the, the different person, service person will contact switch from one, one uh, table to another table to satisfy the different requests. Okay. So that is again you know, an example of you can say multi-programming operating system. And now, what are the disadvantages of uh, multi-programming operating system? So definitely it is diffi uh, difficult as far as scheduling is concerned. So scheduling is very important topic. Scheduling algorithms we are going to discuss in process management next chapter. So uh, definitely if we have we have no uh, you know, more than one process of this program, say the main memory. So, which program will be scheduled for execution? So, which, which process will be picked by the CPU for execution? Who will do this task? What is scheduler? What are the different scheduling algorithms we have? Okay, how this decision will, will, uh, will be made? Okay, so these things will be uh, very important to understand. Okay, so because we have you know, more than one choice, definitely we require some you know, logic or this algorithm through which we can execute that task efficiently. Yeah, so definitely scheduling is somewhat we can say difficult in the case of multi-programming operating system. Next is main memory management is required. Definitely, because we have one more than one processes, so that processes need to be managed properly because all the processes are ready for execution so once once uh, a particular process is given to CPU and again it will come back uh, in a ready queue for remaining execution so that uh, management of the different processes in main memory should be proper okay then memory fragmentation because the main memory is divided into certain number of new partitions as I told you in uh, the first slide. Yes, so, so that fragmentation we need to manage in a proper manner. So there are you know, uh, two types of you know, main, uh, main memory management uh, is there in the case of operating system. One is you know, contiguous memory location and second one is non-contiguous memory location. Next uh, is nothing but your non contiguous memory location, which is nothing but paging. Because when you are talking about uh, you know, contiguous memory location, it suffers from external fragmentation. Okay, and to avoid the external fragmentation, we need to go for a non contiguous memory location in that name. So these are the these things we have no one separate chapter of memory management, we have separate chapter of you know, process management in which. Uh, we will discuss this uh, scheduling algorithms, main memory management, okay, there are effects of you know, memory location policy, contiguous and non-contiguous memory location policy. So that we will see. So uh, you know this keep in your mind right now. Just uh, it is somewhat more difficult for scheduling purpose because we have more than one choice in memory. 
and how we can store that process in main memory in which way so that we can get the maximum benefits from it okay. so these are the uh, different advantages and disadvantages of multi-programming operating system so this is all about multi-programming operating system i hope this is clear to you thanks for watching this video see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.